Welcome to Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker, back again with another episode for y'all. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about the influence that you have uh, if you're incarcerated or formerly incarcerated, about the influence that you have on the people around you and why you should do the right thing. This episode is going to be, it's, in, it's inspired by a conversation, man, that I had with my nephew. I hope that, uh, I hope that you enjoy it and uh, learn something from it. Uh, like I say, it really, uh, this in this episode, you're going to learn that uh, you're going to hear me talk about some things that made me really appreciate the relationship that I have with my nephew. You know what I mean? So with that said, enjoy the episode. Yeah, y'all know what time it is, man. Uh, in this episode, I want to share with you something that's very personal, but I'm not going to get too personal about it because I don't want to violate my nephew's trust in me. But uh, my nephew, he was struggling going through some things, man, you know, about his mom's uh, his, uh, moving on. Uh, she's in a relationship with someone other than his father. And uh, it's been hard for him to adapt and adjust to that. And I had told my sister that I wanted to talk to him about that. And, you know, during our conversation, man, he confided in me that it was hard for him to adapt to that, you know, and that he wanted his moms to be happy. But for so long, it had just been him and her. And he didn't know how to adapt and adjust to this new person being uh, in the equation and it also made him feel uh, some kind of way because he still loves his father and I can imagine how hard that is for my nephew he has this sense of loyalty to his father and he loves his mother and in his mind in his young mind this new man this new man involved in the relationship with with his mom and my sister, is a disrupting factor. And he confided in me some things that uh, really made me understand how influential I am in his life. Now, you got to keep in mind, I've been locked up my nephew's entire life. The first time I held him as a baby was in prison, right? I've watched my nephew grow up to become a strong, talented, athletic, very intelligent teenager. He's 14 now. And... When he was smaller, every time that, you know, my sister would bring him to see me, he would run. When he saw me, he would run and jump into my arms and just squeeze me real tight. Hey, Uncle Joe. I love you, Uncle Joe. You know, and it would just make me feel 10 feet tall. And as he got taller, he would still try to do it, but it was awkward because he was so tall. I was like, man, you ain't going to be able to keep jumping. You know what I'm saying? We just going to have to dap it up. He's like, all right, all right. But it was like, I mean something to him. I mean something to him, and he means the world to me. And a lot of times, man, I hear guys in here give the wrong advice to the people that they love. I did it. I got to be honest with y'all. If you've been listening to my show, you know. I gave the wrong advice to both of my sons. And both of my sons ended up in prison with me. You understand? Sometimes, man, we think that being cool with them is the right thing. No. It's not about being cool with them, y'all. It's about being honest with them. Real with them in ways that you may not have ever been real with yourself. You have to be totally about them. And you have to want better for them than you want for yourself. And I hate 
that I gave my sons the wrong advice. Both of my sons love me today. And for the life of me, sometimes I wonder why. Because I'm not saying that I know that their lives would have taken a different path uh, if I would have given them different advice. But what I do know, if I would not have given them the advice that I gave them in some situations as far as selling drugs and all of that kind of stuff, what I do know is that I would not be feeling guilty because they ended up in jail in prison. Now, whatever path their lives would have taken, it wouldn't have been on me in that way. My uncle used to always tell me, you tell them the right thing, regardless. But see, the problem that I had with that is that I was still doing the wrong thing. So if I'm doing the wrong thing, me giving them the right advice, sometimes, somehow, it would make me feel wrong, bad. Guilty. And feeling guilty is not a good feeling. So, so that I wouldn't feel guilty, I would talk about those aspects of the lifestyle in a way that made me feel okay. Think about what I just said. I was being selfish with my own two sons because I couldn't deal with the guilt, the shame of what I was doing. But now that I live an honest life, there's only one option for me when it comes to giving advice to my nephew or my sons today. And that's the right thing. And I, so I understand how hard it is when you're doing the wrong thing to give the right advice. Because one, you could say all the right things, but if they're watching you, you're being a hypocrite. Most of the times when they're young, they're going to do what you do and not what you say. But I can also understand that the person that's dealing with the, the one that's giving the advice is dealing with a lot of shame and guilt on his own head. So it makes it easier for him to sleep at night by not being so harsh and condemning of the lifestyle that he's leading. But that's taking a selfish point of view. You don't want to feel bad about what you're doing. So you mislead other people. And that's what I did with my two sons, but I won't do with my nephew. I won't do that. And my sons, they understand now, because we talk, we keep it real. And they love me, and I thank God for their love every day. Because I'm telling you, for the life of me, they have every reason to hate me. But they don't. They don't. And it amazes me. I know that's nothing but God's grace. But at the end of the day, I want you to understand if you are somebody that's incarcerated uh, or you are out and formerly incarcerated, you have a big responsibility, man, when it comes to the direction that those younger people that are in your life, whether it be your sons or daughters, nieces or nephews or cousins, you have a big responsibility to do the right thing, man. And you have to be the type of person that will put them before yourself. And you're not going to want to hear this, but it'll be easier for you to do that if you stop doing what you're doing. It's easy to give advice when you're about selling drugs when you're not selling drugs. Because if you're still selling drugs and you're telling your son, daughter, niece, nephew, or cousins that they shouldn't do it and they know you're doing it. You're a hypocrite. They're not going to trust what you say. They only see what you're doing. It can't be as bad as you say because you're doing it. That's what they're going to conclude. You got to remember they got a child's mind. So we have to do better. So what happens is life brings about those opportunities for us to walk away from the criminal lifestyle. And when you find somebody young in your life that looks to you depends on you, looks up to you, and respects you. What that is, is the universe, that's another way the universe is giving you an opportunity to walk away from that lifestyle and say, look, think about this child. Think about this person that's trusting you and what you should be doing. Find that courage to walk away from that. 
so that you can be all that that child believes you to be. Somebody that they can trust. If you understand what I'm saying. And that's not hard to do when you put them before yourself. Because I know you love your niece and nephews and your sons and daughters and your cousins. I love my son. I do. I love them. And they have been the most um, forgiving people that I know. They have. And I want people to understand that when you're trying to influence somebody, you want to do it the right way. If you want to have, you want to have a, a, a place in their life, do the right thing. Because the place that I had in my son's life, uh, even though I appreciated it, I didn't respect it. But I'm going to respect it when it comes to my nephew. I'm going to respect it. Because I'm going to tell him the right thing, even though sometimes it makes me feel uncomfortable because it reminds me of what I used to do and the way that I used to think, which was treacherous. Y'all know what I'm saying. You've been listening to some of my stories. Treacherous, just downright wrong. <laughs> That's nervous laughter. And um, I just wanted to share that with you. Your loved ones, man, depend on you to tell you the tell them the right thing, man. If they come to you and ask your advice or you're talking to them and they're like, what do you think? When my nephew said, well, Uncle Joe, I don't know about this or I'm not sure about that. And I said, well, do you want me to give you some insight on that? And when he says, yes, oh, man, the stakes went up. And I knew that I had to say the right thing because I knew he was going to suck everything that I was saying up and believe it. And now when he talks to me, he's way more open. And I respect the, the, the privacy that he expects from this. I respect it. And our conversations are between me and him. I wish I could go into more detail with you about them, but hey, I just don't want to do that to him. But trust me, anything that a teenager talks to you about out there, my nephew talks to me about, and it is blowing my mind. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> I was a teenager once before, but it was like, this is different. Listening to my nephew ask certain questions. Like, I remember when my son used to ask me all types of questions. It's like, oh, Lord, here we go again. The birds and the bees, the, the uh, uh, about God. It's like, wow, this is a major responsibility. Treat it as such. And I do. And I really appreciate it. And I just wanted to drop that on you. I wanted to tell you, if you are one of those individuals like me, inside prison or outside prison, or you don't even have to have been somebody that's been in prison. And somebody young is looking up to you and asking you questions. Man, do the right thing, man. we got to stop misleading our kids because it contradicts with the lifestyle that we're living. we got to tell them the truth. Tell them the truth. And then in telling them the truth, show them the truth. we got to do that. Don't be a hypocrite. Don't tell your kids or your loved ones that it's wrong to rob, steal, kill, rape, murder, sell drugs, steal packages off of people's porches, lie. Uh, don't tell them that those things are wrong and then you keep doing it. This is your opportunity to get it right. This is your opportunity to get it right. Just wanted to share that with y'all. Now I, ain't, I, don't, I know I know sometimes I sound a little preachy. Forgive me for that. You know what I'm saying? Forgive me for that. But I'm just saying what's on my heart. I love y'all like family. I told you that before in other episodes. The love that you've shown to me, I want to reciprocate that in the best way I can and in, 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 in telling you things that, that I'm going through and sharing that piece of me with you in an honest way. It's the best way I know that I can reciprocate that right now. 
when you love somebody, you owe them the truth, right? I love y'all, so I owe you the truth. So check this out. Make sure you share this episode with all of your friends. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, hit that thing, man. And if you like this episode, share it on your social media with all of your friends and family. And tell them to subscribe, too. I appreciate all the support, y'all. This has been another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker. And I say peace, y'all.